94XO, it's Moni XO. I'm hanging out with Bill Cleveland today, so make sure you guys stay tuned. You're watching 94XO. So how did the idea of Bill on the Road come about? Uh, well, I had worked in radio for a long time, and I decided that I wanted to do something a little bit different, and um, I kind of got started. Read, I was reading all these uh, articles, and they would say, um, you know, these are the 10 worst places to live, right? Or these are the, you know, top 20 least visited places. And I, and I saw those over and over and over and over, and it just drove me crazy. It was so negative. So I decided to start a website, um, BillOnTheRoad.com, and I decided just to start casually posting positive stories about um, people, places, and things. Yeah. Uh, but, but the honest to God true answer is, I, I this, this one story that I read, it was a, um, it was a story, it was top 10, I think it was the top 10, yeah, I think it was top 10 least favorite states or something like that. And then Missouri, uh, where we're from, is on the list. What number? Well, I don't remember what number, it's not important, <laughs> but, because we were on the list, but, but that, that, that didn't bother me. What bothered me was the photo they used to describe Missouri, because it was just one of these things, and it was, yeah, a little blurb, but then, you know, when you think about Missouri, um, you know, you might think of the, the Arch, you mm -hmm. might think of the Ozarks, the fountains in Kansas City, the Clydesdale, you know, whatever. There's all these things you could tie back to the state of Missouri. The photo that they used in their in their article um, was a rundown trailer park somewhere oh, wow. in the middle, of, and, and two guys walking a couple of mangy-looking dogs through the thing. And I thought, well, holy crap, this is Missouri to people. Like, if can you imagine if you've never been to Missouri and you see that photograph, that's the you're gonna think that's the whole state. There. Yeah, I don't want to go there. And so, um, so after I saw that, then I really started thinking, you know, I really could do uh, a whole career doing this, where I would go and just do positive stories because we need to, we need the positive stories. So mm -hmm. that's when I really kicked it into high gear. I quit. I quit all of my other jobs, uh, things that I was working on, and I just focused on it full time. And so that was that was June of 2013. Yeah. And my math isn't very good, so I don't know how long <laughs> I've been doing it, but but I think we're getting close to 10 years. And um, yeah, so far so good. Now, were you scared when it came to quitting all your jobs and going traveling full time? Uh, you know, my dad told me once, um, uh, or maybe he told it to somebody else. He said, "Bill always comes out smelling like a rose." <laughs> And I, th I, I never thought about that until I was older. Uh, and so I, yeah, I, I, no, I didn't care, whatever. I, I thought it'll be all right. I'll figure it out. Uh, I wish I still had some of that in me today. And I'm a little more cautious uh, the older I get. But um, no, I, 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 don't, I wasn't terribly afraid. Uh, the internet was, you know, it's not like the internet was brand new. I, I did have someone tell me, uh, I reached out to a person who covered travel professionally just to kind of gauge you know what I was getting into and she said to me very straight up she said it'll be probably about four years before you start making any money wow. I was like, four years and I'll be darned if she wasn't almost wow. right on the money talking about money um, and so yeah so for the first three or four years it was pretty much like break even you know thankfully I had a little savings to kind of keep me afloat um, but it was worth it, you know. It was it was, it was worth it, and I don't even remember what your original question was, but, um, but yeah, no, I, I was not scared. Oh, that's what it was. I, I wasn't scared, uh, and I'm glad it. It was the best thing that I have ever done to date. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say um, you kind of touched on it, or you did touch on it, where it's, everything is not about money, and I mm -hmm. think that has been one of the biggest issues in society is where we make everything about money and you know you could have all the money in the world i don't but i'm pretty sure that doesn't mean you're gonna be i don't know you paid for that time it's, back it there. doesn't mean you're gonna be like happy all the time so you're right i you know there are people who live in ladue who are in a million dollar homes and i guarantee you i have had more experiences th than they have yeah because they're paying that house they're paying for the house <laughs> and they're working you know 15 mm -hmm. hours a day or more to, to keep their bill yeah so i i've never thought about it and people are always kind of puzzled when i when i say that. i say i'm not in this to get rich I, as long as i'm able to pay my bills and maybe we sock away a little money um, you know, the experiences that I have doing the travel writing and, and, and telling stories of, you know, across the country, um, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's worth more than, than, you know, a new car or a bigger house or, or whatever, but, um, yeah, no, I'm, I've never been in it for the money. Yeah, so when um, you go out of town, you go to these different places, like, how do you find that balance? 
um, going back and forth. I'm sure like in the beginning it was kind of difficult carrying your suitcase around, going here and there for however many days or weeks. What makes you think I carry my own suitcase? Honey? Who carries your suitcase? I got a guy. What's a guy? <laughs> um, uh, I, I don't know. I, it's changed a lot since I first started. So at first, when you are not in the travel writing community, and it is a job, at first I thought, this can't possibly be a career for people. And then I found out after doing it for a little while that, yeah, there's a, a lot of people that do this. A lot of people who are, you know, what I just call fake you know, bloggers, they have, you know, they... I've seen some good, pretty they, good YouTubers. They have, uh, yeah, and they, uh, and, and there are, and you're right, and there are some very talented people who, who, who do it really well. Then there are others who just, you know, all they really want is a free meal and a whatever, yeah. and they kind of ruin it for the rest of us. But, um, no, I, early on, it was difficult because you'd have to sort of, and thankfully I had a radio background, so if somebody Googled my name, they'd go, oh, he's legit, he's been on, on mm. the radio, if that makes you legit. Um, <laughs> but... Now they contact me for the most part, oh, okay. Um, okay. so that's nice. So that that is what changed from early on till now, um, because you meet people, you make connections. You know, just mm -hmm. yesterday I had a situation where I needed to get in touch with somebody in um, in California, and a stop I wanted to go to. Well, early on, there's no way I would have been able to get in touch, but um, because I had worked with somebody that knew somebody, I said, "Hey, can you make a call?" And they did, and I'll be darn, I'm in. You know, so. That's kind of the way that that works. That's that's been the, probably the biggest change is that you know yeah, people that call was, me now. That was going to be the question of how is being you know in media and radio. How does that helped you travel? Like the made it ten times better to go to all these different places. It it, it has helped me immensely because I'm able to do what a lot of travel folks can't do or or won't do. So my background doing um, you know radio, doing video. Uh, public speaking, you know, all these things that are I'm very comfortable with doing. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks who are in the travel writing community, they write. They write books. They write articles. That's it. They don't. They don't like that. They're a lot of them, not all. A lot are, of them are afraid to speak in public. I mean, I people will people will see what I do in front of a, an audience and just sitting down, no script, just chatting and being a goofball and whatever. And I'll never forget this one uh, writer from Wisconsin. She said to me, she's, we're talking at a meeting, and she said, I would have to take three Prozac to get up and do what, what oh, you wow. do. Because <laughs> they're, they're, they're not comfortable. They're, they're, they like being behind the scenes, sitting down, mm -hmm. doing their writing, and, and they're, they're very good at it. But because of the media background, um, I was able to do all these things with, with no problem. Yeah. And so that's, that was very, very helpful to have that background. Well, sure. you have been living the American dream, and you also have oh, your that's book. A, that is a very good hey, segue. Hey, you say, do hey. you have your book, Finding, Finding the American, American Dream? dream. Right. Can you elaborate more on what your book is about and what inspired sure. you going to all these different places? Yeah, so this is my fourth travel book. I wanted to do... Well, let me, let me set it up. So I went to the birth home, or the, the home where uh, Johnny Cash... Do you remember Johnny Cash? You know Johnny Cash? Yeah. I don't know. You're young. You probably like country music. That was real country music. Johnny Cash. Um, so I went to Johnny Cash's birthplace uh, where he lived as a kid through, I think, about the age of 20 um, in a little town called Dice, Arkansas. It's about 30, 35 minutes northwest of Memphis. And he lived in this little house. Um, not really a shack, but it was just a little house mm -hmm. um, that was given to him and his family uh, right after the Great Depression as part of the uh, the New Deal. And his family got to farm the land and they lived in this little house. So I went to, to visit. And, and you drive there, it's seven miles off of Highway 55. You're driving down these uh, dirt gravel roads and the car's bouncing and it's loud and dust is all over the place. And uh, have you ever seen the movie Walk the Line? They kind of feature that movie, uh, excuse mm -hmm. that that house in the movie. And so, uh, so I get there, and of course, having had this experience, you know, where you are in the middle of nowhere, and you can tell looking around that it's a very, very poor um, area and has been forever. Um, and I'm standing there, and I'm in the house, and I'm, you know, looking around and seeing where, where he lived as a kid, and the Cash family, you know, lived for, for all those years. Uh, and then you start to think about um, how successful he became and and how he became a household name all around the world mm -hmm. and he came from this tiny little nothing town and this tiny little house and so as i drove away i started to think man that is first of all it's incredible that somebody could come from here and be yeah. as big and popular and successful as he was 
Um, so I started to kind of make notes about all the places that I had visited uh, or even thought about visiting, visiting um, that kind of had a similar vibe, similar story. Mm. And you start to put together all these profiles. I think there's about 70 people that are profiled, entertainers, um, inventors, founders of companies, um, some cultural icons, whatever, uh, sports people. Uh, and you start looking at all the common al- commonalities they have, and you realize that almost all of these people had to jump through obstacles. They had to overcome, you know, Elvis, for God's sakes, his sixth grade, I think it was sixth or seventh grade music teacher told him he couldn't sing, you know. And look at how he became. Right. Last laugh on her. Right. <laughs> uh, but all of these people had something that they had to overcome, and they achieved what I would consider the American dream. So. That's kind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to tell their stories, but I also wanted to tell people that, um, or I guess convince people that, you know, no matter what they're going through, you know, if you think you've got it bad now in 2020, mm. look what these people did, yeah. you know, to overcome adversity in times that were way, way, way more difficult than what we have to deal with now. Right. Um, and they and they did it. So there's no excuse. I don't like people that make excuses. Um, Unless I'm doing it, uh, and so yeah, so hopefully, hopefully, it's inspiring to people, especially young young people who may you know may have heard that the American dream is dead. I, I don't I don't believe that. I you know I meet people that you know are starting their own small businesses mm-hmm. or uh, you you've done this, um, and, and so it, it's it's absolutely possible. So yeah, and I say I would say that um, what would you or what advice would you give to people that are inspired or already trying to travel and do the same thing as you? Uh, we need no more travel writers. That's, <laughs> um, I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't, I'm not big on giving advice. Um, or even just traveling, period, just for fun. For, tra- for traveling, for fun. I, I just had this argument with my father last night. So he asked for um, uh, advice on a road trip. He's going to, going to a place in Florida. And he said, well, you need a place to stop kind of in the middle. So I gave him a, a, a suggestion, and, and um, I said, so are you going to explore? No, no, I'm just going to stay for the night. We're going to get up the next morning and leave. I said, that is not, that is, then I don't want to, I'm not helping you. <laughs> I'm not helping you with your trip. Uh, I, I tell people all the time, don't rush from point A to point B. Explore the places in between. Um, you, you know, you a lot of people that, and I, I, I realize a lot of folks, you've got, you know, a limited amount of time for your vacation or whatever it may be, but uh, you, you miss out on so much by not stopping along the way, even if mm. it's for, you know, a, just to stretch your legs and see a quirky roadside attraction or visit a, you know, in a kind of a, you know, a tiny little town in the middle of nowhere, uh, you know, talking to some locals or, you know, a small diner somewhere. I mean, there are all kinds of great experiences to have that will make your uh, not only your trip better, but it just kind of makes you more of a well-rounded person. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't know much you travel, but... Um, Sadly, my parents, I was spoiled. I always flew everywhere. So. Well, that's okay. That's <laughs> We all didn't right. get you to really, fly. like, see everything. When I was younger, like, we took road trips, but there it was... Go. I was younger. I don't really remember that much. Yeah. Um, and then when I got older, we were always on flights, so... Oh, yeah, it was different. Well, I'm Bill on the road, not Bill in the air. So <laughs> I, I drive most places. I did fly to Las Vegas a few weeks ago, but um, but generally I drive. Uh, because it's, it's, it's better. I can go at my own pace. I don't have to, you know, if, if, I, want to br- if I want to bring on my trip a, um, you know, a thing of shampoo this big, I can do that. You can't I don't do have that to, on the plane. Nope. <laughs> And I, I, I will tell you, that happened to me. I had, it wasn't, it wasn't, I was, I was bath gel or whatever the heck, body wash, whatever the heck the crap is called. And, uh, and it was, it was like this big. And I was so excited because I, I was, I packed everything and I got, and I get to the TSA and they, uh, they've confiscated my luggage. So now I know there's trouble. And, um, and the gal pulls me aside and, you know, they're very serious, you know. Uh, and, and she said, is this your suitcase? And I said, well, yeah, that's, that's my suitcase. And she's like, well, so she starts going through it and then she pulls out the, the, the bath gel or whatever. And she goes, well, you can't bring this on. I, well, why not? I just, I just bought it. <laughs> I just got a deal on it. Like, it was like two, like two dollars and fifty cents. I was so excited. I'd found this great purchase. I got you. Well, we have to throw it away. Throw it away. Uh, so I learned the hard way. It's been a long time since I had do you and think so, they really throw that stuff away? Oh, no, I watched her because I <laughs> honestly considered when she wasn't looking, going in and taking it out of the garbage, but they had a, <laughs> uh, a deal. They had a gate. Like, I'll, I'll be the guy thrown out of Lambert for, uh, you know, 
You can tell I'm a radio so guy. I'm, 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 I'm taking garbage out. Uh, no, it was, no, it was, it, but I learned, so no, I won't do that anymore. I won't, I won't take a big thing of trash. Well, before we wrap up into the... Wrapping up? We're just getting started. Before we wrap Unbelievable. it up into the Close the Rage R segment, can you let everybody know where they can purchase your book or... Find more information about you with your website or social media platforms. Um, sure. So you can go to Bill on the Road. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you why that's funny after our interview. BillOnTheRoad.com. That's my website. So people can go there for travel uh, tips. Not, not so much tips, but um, suggestions, places to go, uh, interesting stories about interesting people, and then videos about... Um, that highlights some of the places that I go to. Um, and then Facebook um, is just facebook.com slash bill on the road. So. Okay. All right. You ready? Sure. Are we going to show the lemons at all? I'm very upset. He's... I have, uh, are you getting this? What's his name back there? What's his name? <laughs> Zippy? Zip? Bidell. Lyndon? What? What is it? <laughs> Light... <laughs> what is his name? I'm sorry. I'm so embarrassed. Are we going to keep this? Bidell. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to run all of it. What is it? I'm so sorry. Fidel, who's doing all the work here, he's back there hustling. Uh, this is just a little health tip. Can we put? Can we say yes. this? Why not? Uh, uh, kids, listen to this. You want to stay healthy. You want if you want to lose a little weight, half a lemon. You squeeze it into a, a like an eight ounce, uh, ten ounce a glass of warm water, and you drink it every morning, and it'll just. And you'll lose weight. Yeah, lose a little weight and and stay healthy. <laughs> so there you go. All right, what are we doing? Okay, now to start off, go ahead, open that jar for me. All right. You're going to pick three questions out. Oh, I like this. This is clever. Although this was made for you. I haven't seen a question, so. <laughs> but here's the problem. I don't know that I can read this. Maybe I can. If you need help, I will help you. Oh, I need help. Okay. <laughs> what song lyric best mirrors your life motto? Oh, that's good. Song. Well, first of all, you're not going to know any songs that I know. I'm sure that's... was made for him. What song lyric, let me make sure I got this right, what song lyric best mirrors your, probably the song uh, Life is a Highway, remember that one? Life is a Highway. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, let's go that with that. That was perfect, actually. Let's <laughs> go with that one. Yeah. We got to sing a little song. Okay. Next question. Oh, I do another one? Oh, I could go through all of these. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh... It's upside down. You can tell I didn't drink my lemon juice today. I'm having trouble with the... Okay, if you could tell your teenage self one thing, <laughs> what would it be? That's an excellent question. Um, teenage self. Hmm. Probably not to be afraid to be yourself. I, I had, I wouldn't say I had a rough childhood because my, my childhood was great. I didn't have any problems. My parents were fine, whatever. Um, but I, I moved to Southern California when I was starting high school. Uh, my mom lived out there. Dad lived here in the Midwest. And so I had that opportunity to go and sort of start anew, you know? Mm -hmm. and, um, and when I did, I was able to kind of you know, nobody knew who I was, nobody knew anything about me, and I was able to sort of reinvent myself. And, and that was uh, a tremendous um, blessing to be able to do that. But knowing what I know now, I didn't have to wait to move out, to, out yeah. there and do it. I could have just done it here, um, a little warmer out there. But, you know, so that's, that's what I would probably tell my teenage okay. self. So. Last question. Last one. Oh, I'm so sad. This is... <laughs> As the sun is going down. Okay. What is the last thing you did just for yourself? Oh. The last thing I did just for myself. A little lemon water? <laughs> uh, what did I do just for myself? I feel like everything I do is just for myself. Um, that's a good question. And I had to ask it to myself. <laughs> Um, what did I do just for myself? I got my car. I washed my car. Does that okay, count? that counts. I, I love having a nice, clean car. I went and did that uh, yesterday. So, yeah, that's what I did. Okay. And that is a big deal to me. Me a nice too. Clean car. Yeah, so. Maybe. Yeah. Sometimes. 
<laughs> yeah, no, that's good. Uh, well, I hate, I hate, well, I'd like to look at the other questions, but I'll leave those for somebody else. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Yes, it was fun. And uh, Videl, Videl. <laughs> Videl, good job back there on the can. The guy never gets any credit, but uh, he's doing a good job. <laughs> and thank you. thank you. I'm on the XL, and we are out. Be easy. <laughs> It's your girl Moni XO and you just finished a 94 XO interview. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media platforms. Be easy.